Hey guys, I'm Randy. And I'm back. <laughs> we're two lifelong friends and musicians, but when we're not playing gigs, we like to talk games. And today on the Gaming Gig Podcast, we're discussing whether or not Nintendo is bringing back the dual screen design. Yep, Daniel, you're back. I am back. And you know what else might be back? Might be coming back. No, what? Nintendo may be bringing back the dual screen from the DS and the 3DS. Now, say what? I know, right? So, <coughs> we, we were talking about this on the Discord server. Mm -hmm. Oh, Tom Derry chimed in and said, I'm so out of the loop. Is the two screen setup a leak design or a fan theory? Does it eliminate a screen if in dock mode? We're going to go through all that for you, Tom, today. These are all good questions. These are the questions on the, the tips of the tongues of all the Nintendo faithful. So it's neither a leaked design or a fan theory. What it is is that Nintendo filed a patent. The patent was made public. Mm -hmm. What it is is essentially it is showing a concept for a handheld gaming device yep. that has dual screens. And I will show a little bit of the patent now. Here's what it looks like when it's opened up. You're going to notice it looks an awful lot like a DS or a 3DS. It does look an awful lot like a DS or a 3DS. The The biggest difference that I see is that it has no buttons. Yeah, it has no buttons. Now, just because it doesn't have any buttons in the patent doesn't mean that it's not going to have buttons. Lots of times in these patents, they leave out a lot of the finer details. It's really just about the concept. And you might be thinking, well, this patent looks exactly like a 3DS. DS, what's the difference? Well, the difference is, is that these two sections can be taken apart and then you have two gaming systems. Mm -hmm. And it'd be easy to lose one of them. It's kind of like the... That's a design part. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And then not only that, you can fold them together and then there's a screen on the outside. Mm -hmm. So this is not the DS. I mean, we've answered our own question. They are not bringing back the dual screen design. They're bringing back... No, they're bringing forth the tri-screen design. Tri yeah. So... I, you know, okay, that's basically what happened. Nintendo put out this patent where the patent was made public mm -hmm. and the internet goes crazy because they think, is this what the next thing from Nintendo is? Right. And maybe, but I'd say realistically, probably not. I mean, companies file patents like this all the time and very rarely do what they patent actually turn into a product that makes it to the public. Yeah, there's like whole this whole websites like dedicated to just like mining through all the various patents that big companies, you know, file for. Like they do this with Apple all the time. Nintendo's no exception. So Right. But that being said, if you remember back pre-Switch, a little ways before, maybe a year or something before the Switch came out, we had a patent come out from Nintendo that was the Switch concept and it ended up becoming the Switch. Now mm -hmm. we've had a lot of patents come from Nintendo that ended up being nothing, mm -hmm. but we, so I mean, there is a chance that this could become a product. I'd say it's a very low chance. Yeah. I can't quite figure out the three screen thing. Now the two screen thing, like Nintendo's done it before. Right. Right. And whole, like, you know, whole, like being able to separate them, like, okay, I, I, that's a neat gimmick. Mm -hmm. But where does the third screen come in? That's what my feeble kudzu born brain can't get behind. Right. Where does the third screen come in? But still, and how do I use the single lone joystick <laughs> with the third screen deployed? And if you look when it's folded, there's absolutely no buttons on the outside. I know. <laughs> you ain't got to tell me nothing, buddy. No, I mean, like I said, some of the, those finer details are often left off of the patents. They just have like basically the concept be, being patented here. And they only include the, the most important details relevant to the patent. But whatever. still, it's interesting to think that Nintendo may be experimenting about bringing back the dual screen design or even the, the, the tri-screen design. You heard it here first, folks. You know, it may happen. So, like, it's an interesting question, and uh, it sparked a lot of debate. And instantly I put out a poll saying, would you like for Nintendo <laughs> to revisit the dual screen concept? What are you laughing about? Because you said you instantly put Instant, out a poll. Like, instantly. Like, instantly. Actually, no, I, I waited many days after this got released. But I, the, the word instant is what cracked me up. Instant. It yeah. was It was, It was. was. Exactly. So the anyway, I found out about it. Randy instantly put out a poll and instantly <laughs> 1.8 thousand votes were cast, right? 58% said, uh, yes, we would love to see a dual screen design back, which leaves a measly 42% that said no. So honestly, it's kind of split. It's kind of split. And we did a, a, the poll over on our Discord server as well. And it was also split. I think it may have gone, you know, a little bit more towards the no's and the yeses, but I can't remember. It was it was about the same. I'm so split myself. I'm, I'm so split myself that on the Discord poll, I clicked yes. And then immediately I was like, you know what? No. And I yeah. changed to no. That's how split I was. I don't even know what I think. Speaking of, this is a good time to go ahead and plug our Discord. 
If you're not a member of our Discord server, we would love you to become a member of the Discord server. There is an invite link in the description of this podcast wherever you get it. Mm -hmm. It's a great place to hang out with us, talk games with a lot of really cool people. Way cooler and way nicer than the two of us, I promise. Yeah, and way nicer than the people who are like generally in YouTube comments too. Oh my God, yes. Much better gaming discussions. Although, I will say, I think that our YouTube channel does have some of the better gaming discussions out there. But still, I think... Better, more like best. (laughs) But still, I think our Discord server, it's like, it's a great place. It is. Very welcoming. But anyways, so... um, Speaking of, we have some comments here on this talking mm-hmm. about, like, do people want this dual screen design to come back? That's right. We got a comment here from old Banjer416. Banjer says, if they do, it would be possible to make this console almost compatible with every Nintendo game. But honestly, I'm hoping more for a gamepad mode so it could also work like the Wii U. You bring up a great point, Wii old Banjo. I'm really torn. Banjer. It's not Banjo. It's Banjer. So I'm honestly torn. I don't... I, I don't want the next thing from Nintendo to be a dual screen design. I'll just be honest. But Mm-mm. I do think that there is something here that I think would be cool that's an alternate to this. Um, I, the reason I don't want it to be a dual screen design is I think that the dual screen design is kind of... Gimmicky. Well, it's kind of gimmicky. And there's more comments later on that kind of address it. Mm-hmm. But it does... Banjo does bring up a good point in that it would be possible if they did this. It would be possible basically to be able to go backwards compatible with every Nintendo Pass system. We've already got all the way basically up to the Nintendo 64 on Switch right now. Mm-hmm. We have GameCube games coming over in the form of remasters. Yeah. But we haven't seen any DS stuff. Mm-hmm. We have, Well, we've seen 3DS ports, but no like emulation of DS, 3DS. But say they ex- right. expand Nintendo Switch Online to include DS stuff. Mm-hmm. We'd be able to have that. I think that would be really cool. That would be cool. And, you know, you you had, I don't know when you want to pull the rug off of this idea that you introduced to me yesterday at the gig, mm-hmm. but, but you have an idea. I do have an idea. And I, what I, my idea would be, and it's not anything to do with dual screens, but this mm-hmm. made me think about it, is if the next thing that Nintendo is, let's just call it the Switch 2 for ease. If the Switch 2 doesn't dock with a dock, but instead can somehow wirelessly dock to the TV. Say you just have a dongle, you plug into your TV, and it can use press a button on your Switch, and it all of a sudden is casting to the, the dongle or whatever. Mm-hmm. So that you're casting on the TV. Could they do it so that you can cast, but then have something different on the handheld? So that basically you can kind of emulate DS stuff, 3DS stuff by having Wii U stuff. Wii U, Wii U stuff, exactly. Something on the TV, something on your handheld. And basically it kind of brings us into that same backwards compatibility with all of Nintendo systems mm-hmm. through that. I think that is a really interesting idea. But I also think it might be a little harder to play some of those 3DS games going back and forth from something like that that's not like connected. Definitely. definitely. But I think that's a really good workaround. Yeah, and you could potentially. I mean, like, I don't know if you've ever played around with emulating any DS, 3DS stuff on something that wasn't a dual screen thing. You know I have, buddy. Well, (laughs) then you know that you can do things like stack the screens, and it still works, Mm -hmm. you know. Um, Just switch between them. You you can have them be side by side. There's a lot of options that work. Mm -hmm. The problem is, is that to play those games, they're largely touchscreen focused. Yeah. Luckily, the Switch does have a touchscreen, mm-hmm. but if you did it so that you were having on the TV, you had the one, the main screen, and then in your handheld, you had the bottom screen, mm-hmm. which also happens to be a touchscreen, just like the DS, 3DS was, mm-hmm. it would work pretty well, I think. I, I think, think it'd be a great way to do it. I think it would, too. I, now, I mean, I never played Star Fox uh, Zero. Is that the one that was on Wii U that... Yeah. Yeah, so that's, for some reason, that's the first game that comes to mind, because I, I used to always hear people complain about... For one, the controls, but really like how hard it was to to have to look at the gamepad sometimes and then have to look at the TV sometimes and mm-hmm. to switch back and forth. I know people hated that. Mm-hmm. So that's why I think it would be less than ideal, but a, a good option to have. Yeah. Options are always good. And then if you wanted to play it purely in handheld, they could just like stack the screens mm-hmm. and it would still function. You know, you'd still have your touchscreen capabilities and still work. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, they haven't. They could do that now. Yeah, they could. But it would only work in handheld. I think that's why they haven't done it. Yeah. But if they could do it to where when you dock it, you have the main screen and then you have to have the the switch in your hand. Of course, it would only work if it was a wireless dock. Mm -hmm. But I'd say that there's a real potential that we could see a wireless dock in the next iteration of the switch. Definitely. 
And what I'm, what I would be most excited about is kind of a, kind of a genesis of your idea and this leaked design, because if we could have the tri screen that wirelessly docks, then we have the quad screen. <laughs> well, but, and then you can close it and, and, and you would have to quickly open and close it to access the third of the four screens. What is this? It's just me being stupid. Oh, okay. I'm like, I mean, I could never tell with Daniel. It's just me being stupid, dude. It's literally just a joke. Oh, okay. I'm like, I was like, what do you mean open it and close it quickly? Well, you would have, because you would have to close it to be able to look at the third screen. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Because the third screen looks to be on the outside it of the is. clamshell. It is on the outside of the clamshell. Yeah. So. Who knows? I don't know how you didn't follow me there. Maybe that's the way, maybe the outside screen is so that they can port their mobile games over. Oh, you know, God. and then it's just like you have a smartphone. And then you can play Mario Kart Tour or whatever it is. Yeah, exactly. You can play it in, in vertical mode. The outside it's, screen is exclusively Super Mario Run. Yeah. <laughs> That's rid- all it plays. It's ridiculous. So, all right, let's move on to another comment here. We got a comment from the Landator who said, I feel like third-party developers aren't going to want to have to develop for that, and it hinders the portability of games to future systems. I think it's the biggest reason why Xenoblade Chronicles X was never ported to the Switch and probably could name a lot of other 3DS games as well. Mm -hmm. I do think that the DS and 3DS, the reason we're not seeing them ported over is because of the dual screen, for sure. Yeah, and I'm with Landinator that I don't really want you know, the next generation of Nintendo games to be locked behind a gimmicky hardware design. Mm-hmm. Um, I think somebody else on the discord may have said something, you know, in response to something like this saying like, well, they don't really have to use it, right. you know, which is true, but it's there. I mean, mm-hmm. you're definitely encouraged to use it. I mean, I'm kind of with Landonator on this, which is why I ultimately changed my vote to a no. Yeah. I do think that if they, if we did see a wireless dock, I think that that may potentially open the possibility to be the best of all worlds. Where you know mm-hmm. the they can do these things if they want to do something different on the Switch versus the TV, you could, but you could totally just treat it like it's a controller. You know, and yeah. We'll get into that more in a minute because there's another comment that kind of addresses it. Mm-hmm. But next, we got a comment from Guy. Hit us with Guy's comment here, Daniel. And Guy said, I'm just going to say yes, even though I know it'd be horrible for longevity. But man, I'd love to see how they would do it now. I loved the Wii U. And the Wii U was really kind of cool. It was like the next evolution of the dual screen idea. I loved it too. Um, but I know it didn't sell well, it didn't but do I loved well. it. So, I mean, like, just because it's a cool idea doesn't mean... It, but then again... It was the marketing is the reason it didn't do well. Uh, yeah, kind of, but it also didn't... Yes, marketing, I think, does make a big difference. But I also think that the whole concept just didn't really catch fire with consumers, even the, the people who had it. I mean, I know people that had the way you liked it, mm-hmm. but I, I think that even if it had really been like, guys, this is the way to game now, mm-hmm. it would have, you know, it would have word of mouth traveled and it would have done better. And I just don't think that happened. I, I don't understand why um, people never like saw the potential. Like I, immediately, as soon as I saw it, I was like, this is sick. The TV can be used for TV, and I can play a game. That's oh, the first that, thing I thought of. You mean, oh, you're saying like you can play your games on your gamepad? Yes. Which now, the, I know that wasn't the main basically idea. Basically, that's why the Switch, because they took that concept right. and made it better. Right. Yeah. And you could do that with the Wii U. So yeah. that's why I don't understand why people didn't. They refined upon that concept, but what they didn't refine on is the the kind the of dual screen, the idea. dual screen, the asymmetrical gaming where mm-hmm. you have in your hand and you have something on screen, something weird going on there. And I hope they learn from that. Yeah, because the Switch killed everything, and the Wii U was not that. right. Well, we'll see. So I hope they learn from that. I, I, maybe they have, and maybe they have. Maybe they think they can do the Wii U but better. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just don't know. We got a comment from Luke. Who said, I, uh, I personally love the DS design. I love the utility of the second screen, even if it isn't used for anything fancy. Having a broadly action screen and a separate info screen is so nice to always have access to, especially in games like Fire Emblem, where I'm constantly checking abilities and crunching numbers. I agree. It is nice for those, um, you know, turn-based kind of strategy games that that do require a lot of number crunching and, and information checking and status checking. And that is nice to have. Totally. And it's also great for adventure games where you just would like to have a map open at all times, mm-hmm. you know, like true. It's good to have that kind of stuff. I, you know, lots of games do it differently, but there's tons of options. And I don't know that I ever played too many games where it was like obvious that the second screen was just like useless. 
Mm-hmm. Very few. I can't even think of one where I was like, man, the, the second screen on this game is totally useless. It's worse by being here. I noticed that a lot. Um, like, cause you know, I got that DS Lite from you. Yeah. And I've noticed that quite a bit when I play Game Boy Advance. Mm. Cause there's nothing there. <laughs> right. Literally useless. <laughs> I mean, it, it like stays black. You know, you can change. You can you can choose which screen you play on. Yeah, but one's always useless. One's always useless. Which one, I know it's a side topic, but which one do you choose? Do you choose the top screen or the bottom screen when you're playing Game Boy Advance games? I have no idea. I choose the top screen. I think I would use the, the top screen. It's bigger. Screen. Yeah, it's bigger. I would probably use the top screen. But if you do the bottom screen, it kind of gives you the old school Game Boy Advance feel because it's mm-hmm. like you have the screen right between your fingers. You want to, if you really want to see some behind the scenes here, I'm going to do it. So I'm going to pull the curtain back here. Randy, I've never played Game Boy Advance on that DS Lite. I was just making another joke. Oh, okay. Um, and you ruined it again. I, I like to ruin your jokes. If your jokes are, are able to be ruined so easily, it starts to question the integrity of your jokes to begin with. Just saying. Integrity. You sit here in my house and mm-hmm. question my integrity. Your jokes, integrity, not your integrity. Oh. The integrity of your jokes. Speaking Randy's of, been really mean to me the past two days. I just want y'all to know that. I've been very nice. Speaking of being very nice, it would be very nice if you come and join us on Twitch. That's right. You can watch us be mean to each other. <laughs> we stream on Twitch on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays at 8 p.m. Eastern. We'll be there tonight. Of course, this podcast will be coming out on a Monday, so it'll be in the past. And we'll also be here tomorrow. Ah, oh, there you go. Mm-hmm. And that'll be in the present. Yeah, we're doing a playthrough of uh, Baldur's Gate 3 now, and I think it's freaking awesome. I'm really enjoying it. Um, it is full of hilarity. Uh, we've only really gotten one good session in, because mm-hmm. the first time we streamed it was completely dedicated to character building. And also the stream didn't work. That too. <laughs> Thank you, our internet service provider. Um, but it seems like that has been sorted out, knock on wood. But uh, yeah, uh, last time we streamed Baldur's Gate, Randy died because he made out with an octopus guy. A it squid, was sick. A squid guy, more. More of a squid guy. He is more of a squid guy. And yeah. they made me do it. They they were like, kiss him, kiss him, I mean, kiss that's him. what the people wanted to see, man. And then I died from it. So. He did, and I stole his clothes. Yeah. That anyway, happened. if you yeah. want to see that kind of crap, come watch a stream. But we've got to serve ourselves another comment here from and Antronix. Antronix. Antronix 3. Antronix 3 says, The reason they abandoned it in the first place was because of the Wii U. People just didn't want to constantly switch their attention from the TV to the control pad. It worked better in handheld because both screens were in front of you. I don't think they're going to go back to that for home console at least. Yeah. That's kind of what we've said. Yeah, I think that's more or less what we said. Like with the Wii U, it it with certain games, like you mentioned that Star Fox game, I think mm-hmm. people didn't really love it. I don't know that I ever played a Wii U game where I was like, yeah, this this is really awesome. Like swapping back and forth between mm-hmm. looking at my controller and looking at the TV. I don't remember doing that. I don't think I, de- I I know for a fact I didn't do that. The reason I liked the Wii U was for games that didn't worry about that so much. Mm-hmm. And you could just play it on your pet game pad. Yes, that's why I liked the Wii U. Yeah, and I think it's great for that. And that's why the Switch is awesome because it took the concept and perfected it. Now mm-hmm. you can just literally pick it up and plop it down. But imagine that. Instead of having the dock your Switch, you just press a button and now it's on your TV. And you could charge your Switch from any charger and not have to worry about bricking it, Nintendo. Well, that's definitely not going to be a thing. You don't think so? We're going to be bricking our Switches constantly. You think Nintendo's going to go again? With, like, it's going to have to be USB-C. It's USB-C now. Yeah, I know. But it, but I'm saying it's going to be USB-C in the future. I feel very certain. Okay. And you're saying that you don't, you still don't think they'll go like traditional like USB-C PD? You don't think they'll do that? I wouldn't. I wouldn't put it past them, man. God, that would be so freaking mean. I wouldn't put it past them. We'll, be, we'll still be bricking the switch too. No, no worries. We'll brick them. We got a comment here from from Corian. I don't know. There's a lot of letters after that. Corian, t- 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 I don't know. Mm. I, I'm, <laughs> I gave up pretty quick on that one as well. Mm. Said so maybe in some new consoles, but for Switch Two, it's best to stick to one screen. One of the problems with the Wii U uh, had was the two screens. Developers had to make special versions for the Wii U, and 90% of them did refuse to do so. Dual screen on home console is asking for problems, less third-party games mainly being one. Yes, I agree. And one of the things the Switch had going for it is that we got that third-party support back. Right. After a long time of not having it. Mm-hmm. And it's all there wasn't third-party support on things like the DS and the 3DS. Because yeah. there was. But that's because the only real competitive handheld system was the ones being made by Nintendo. I think they were going to be on Nintendo's handhelds 
no matter what, because they were the most popular handhelds. Right. And they, they probably still would be the most popular handhelds, if not the only handhelds, but... Right. They are the only handhelds right now, besides handheld PCs, but mm -hmm. now we're starting to see some competition we're, in that market. Yeah, we're fixing to get the PlayStation portable, but that's a whole other kind mm -hmm. of thing, but... We'll be talking about that in the future, so... Yeah, we will. Um, yeah, I, I'm I'm with Corey and Tumpaki Mini. Uh, <laughs> I don't I don't want them to do it for the home console either. If they wanted to go back to a home console and a and a portable, which I don't necessarily want them to do, we we've, we've talked about that in the past too. But I mean, if they wanted to do that and they wanted their portable to be you know some sort of dual screen, okay, fair enough. But yeah, I agree. I don't I don't want them to go back. I don't want them to do a dual screen. I I just just I don't, don't do it, Nintendo. Don't. don't don't listen to that demon on your shoulder. Yeah. You made so much money with a not dual screen. Right. Think of the dollar bills. Think of the dead presidents. But then at the same time, I, mean, I get the argument that um, they came up with some cool stuff because of the dual screen stuff. They did. They did. Let's see what RXH has to say. Mm -hmm. I want them to do what everyone thought the Wii U was going to be. A console that comes with a portable game controller handheld but to be honest that probably be very expensive oh a console that comes with a portable game controller that's basically like what the switch is right i mean yeah except it just is the console it just is the console but if the switch could wirelessly dock then mm -hmm. that's what it would be you wouldn't even have to buy a separate controller because your switch in your hand would be your controller yeah that's true and we haven't even i mean this we have we also haven't mentioned that this patent design does not have detachable controllers. It does not. No, it's a purely handheld control. It, it doesn't. Also, the patent doesn't talk anything about docking to a TV. But I don't know that it would need to. Right, because that's already. I do want to reiterate yeah. that I don't think this patent is going to be what we see next from Nintendo. Yeah. I would be very surprised. Yeah, but still, it's interesting. I agree. All, All right. right, we ready for our comment from in Indo Nintendo. Oh yes, Indo said, "I'm good with the main idea being the Switch. Just make two models. One is the regular size model, and one mini model for people who missed the days when Nintendo made true portables like the Game Boy. Make sure the mini model can be docked to a TV, though. The one reason I never bought a Switch Lite. It's got to be smaller than the Switch Lite too. Again, like Game Boy size. Now this is a man after my own heart, or well, man, I don't know." But, you know, I don't hear a lot of people saying this, that they wish Nintendo would go back to making a true portable that's small. But I would love that. But the problem is that you also said all these other things, like it's it's got to also do the docking, and it's got to be this, and it's got to be that. And I just don't think they'll do that. I don't think they'll do it. They could have very easily had the Switch Lite be dockable. Yes. The reason they didn't do that was because they didn't want people to just be buying the Switch Lite. Mm -hmm. Because they, I mean... If they made it the same price, maybe then they would have done that. Mm -hmm. If they wanted it to be cheaper to give people a lower price way to get into the Switch ecosystem, that's the reason they took docking out. They could have, it easily could have docked. Oh yeah, for sure. And you also got to remember, you said it has to be Game Boy size, which sounds amazing for portability. But I don't know if you've ever tried to emulate like a sort a home console game on something as small as a Game Boy. Uh, but I have. I have emulated like PlayStation 1 on something as small as a Game Boy, if not smaller. And it's really hard sometimes to play those games. Yeah, the smaller you make it, the harder it is going to fit all that tech needed in there to make it happen. And just to be able to see everything on screen. Like it's just not oh, yeah. It's just not easy when you scale something that was meant for a TV down to that small. So, Reports are that the next device that Nintendo working on has a bigger screen than the current Switch, I think makes sense. Yeah, oh, I think it will too. Yeah. I... And that's the thing is like, well, kind of getting on topic. I don't want to move to that yet because um, I was going to say, and that's the reason I think we're not going to see this design. I think because apparently the Switch has already been shown behind closed doors. Like that got leaked out and I'm pretty sure that's fairly credible. Mm -hmm. And nowhere did anyone say like, it's a DS. Um, like, right. No. And I feel like if, if that had happened, we would have heard about this. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't yeah. have taken until some, you know, patent comes out. Mm -hmm. I agree. And that, I mean... I would love to see a little mini Nintendo thing that could play like some indie games and some low powered games, but it just ain't gonna happen. Maybe that, give us Nintendo come out with maybe like a uh, what did, what did they call like it? Like a, a, like a mini, like a mini system. Yeah, yeah. maybe like come out with like a, a Game Boy Mini, a okay. Game Boy Advance Mini, or yeah, oh, yeah, that'd be awesome. Or even if they came out with like a a, a 3DS variant mm -hmm. that could that was like just set to play, you know. Uh, 
cloud, not cloud, I'm sorry, but be able to download from a service like mm-hmm. a uh, like Nintendo Switch Online, and you yeah. can play Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, DS, 3DS games all from a service. That would be awesome. Yeah, yeah I'd love to see that. And, uh, you know, who knows? And that could... <laughs> I could totally see him putting some out like that, and the only way to even get games on there is to subscribe. Like you can't even buy games individually. Mm-hmm. Like you know, it's just purely yeah. like a subscription device. No, oh, I could see that for sure. Which I think is what we might see with the PlayStation Portal if it ever is able to cloud stream. I think it'll be purely through a subscription. Oh yeah, so I think it will too. So who knows what we're gonna see? So, so all we know for sure is that it's gonna add up. The price is gonna add up, baby. That's all we know. Oh, yeah. All we really know is that something's coming from Nintendo. I cannot wait until we see what it actually is. Realistically, Daniel, when do you expect to see something from Nintendo about whatever is coming after the Switch? Well, it's going to be... We've got to get through the holidays. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe spring. Maybe you know, spring. I could see it in spring. And then maybe... Do a release later in the year, if not holiday, twenty twenty four. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I think next year is definitely, probably. I don't want to say definitely, but probably when we're gonna see whatever's coming on the switch. Mm-hmm. It seems like things are winding down. You know, all the things we're getting are largely re releases, which is pretty common at the end of a yeah. You know, especially Nintendo systems mm-hmm. at the end of its lifespan, a lot of re releases. What are we getting, like, one new game? We're getting that Princess Peach game? Are there mm-hmm. any other big-name games coming out next year that we know about? Uh, I can't think of any that are actually new games. I mean, obviously, we're getting the Super Mario RPG remake, and I think that's going to be a big one. But but that's coming this month. I'm thinking, like, next oh, year. Oh, you like, mean next year. Like, next year. Like, anything that's been announced that... I know we're getting the Luigi's Mansion uh, 2 remake. Or yeah. Remaster. Mm-hmm. Not a remake. So, it's, there's just not really anything. Well, like, Metroid Prime 4. Yeah. Uh-huh. For sure, that's happening. Two thumbs down. No, I think that we might see Metroid Prime 4 be a cross-gen game. I think I think so, too. I think it kind of makes sense that they would do that. Mm-hmm. Or maybe it's just been pushed to the whatever's coming next. But I'm telling you what. If if we've reached the end of like big releases for the Switch, mm-hmm. Super Mario Wonder was a great way to close it out. Because I've been playing the crap out of that game since the last time I was on one of these dang podcasts. And that game is amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. I mean, we've seen the Switch has had a great. There's been some years where it was a little off years, but mm-hmm. overall, it has been great. Yeah, and if the Switch Two can release with, you know, in the in the close to release time, a Metroid Prime Four, a Donkey Kong game, damn it, <laughs> and the new 3D Mario, that'd be a great. Jesus start. Christ, yeah. we're rewriting the Switch. I mean, it's we're about right back in this thing. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, which would be amazing. I would love to see Nintendo continue to be super competitive. I think that it's really, honestly, it's kind of shaken up the gaming industry as a whole. You know, we've mm-hmm. seen that be super, super successful. I think prior to the Switch, PlayStation was really dominating. Oh yeah, and I think um, PlayStation has found that. They've got some competition from, I think, from Nintendo. I know there's not a whole lot of overlap, but I think there's enough overlap now that PlayStation isn't in as good shape as they once were. Yeah. And I know, like, we're just ignorant Americans, you know? Like, we're just over here, you know, bathing in kudzu, like I always say. And, um, you know, we don't really always see how big Nintendo is, like, in Japan, right? Mm -hmm. Like, they're huge over there. Mm -hmm. You know, like, Nintendo is massive, and they're not going anywhere. So no, they're not. And I do want to re- say before because I don't make it seem like I'm dishing on in PlayStation. I love PlayStation. Oh yeah, we're both really excited to get the portable. <laughs> we really are. And I, I, I really love. I love Xbox. I love PlayStation. I love Switch. I love them all. I want them all to do really, really well. Like mm-hmm. genuinely. But especially Nintendo. Uh, well, I'm a Nintendo kid at heart. I have to say, and uh, you are too. Oh, hundred percent. I mean, we just are. That's just what we are. And this new Mario game has really brought it back to me too. It's like, like your it, little kid playing your little it's Mario. It's like again. I'm a little kid again. I, it makes me. Well, I mean, I know I told you this, but I want to go play Super Mario Bros. Two again. Like that was your childhood Mario to completion. Game. It was the one I loved the most. Yeah, mm-hmm. as a kid. It's a charming game. Isn't it, it is, man. It's so weird. I just realized that I completely forgot to put the three for Dale Club on the outline. Well, I noticed that about. 20 minutes ago. Did you really? Yeah. <laughs> and I knew we would get there. Why did you say that? Well, what were we supposed to do? I don't know. Well, I mean, what were we supposed to do about How it? did I forget the three for Dale Club? I think, well, Randy's been dealing with a with yeah. a set of, of real, with a real life stressor mm-hmm. um, here lately. 
And, um, and I was putting this outline together in between. Basically, what happened is we have a water line that's ruptured in front of our house. Mm-hmm. And we were dealing with digging it up and trying to figure out what's up and where the leak is. Mm-hmm. And I was doing all that while making the outline. Yeah. So, I, got, meanwhile, I was just trying to make espresso. Yeah, Daniel got a new espresso machine. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put everybody who's in the Three for Dale Club up right here. Actually, right here. Oh, they're the best. Gosh, we love you guys. Thank you, Dale himself and everybody else who's certainly there. <laughs> Everyone who's here. Thank you, guys. You are the best. If you want to be part Man. of the 3 for Dale Club, here's how you join. All you got to do is leave us a comment and include the secret code phrase, 3 for Dale. That's right. 3 for Dale is our code phrase that tells us you made it all the way to the end to the end of one of these dreadful podcasts. So if you did that, if you toughed it out with us, drop a 3 for Dale. We may not be able to, you know, help you out in any other way, but we can put your name, we can say your name out loud or like this week have to put it up there because I forgot to do it. Yeah. Are they still there? They're still there, actually. Y'all need to get out of my house. See you guys. (laughs) (laughs) All right, y'all. Well, until next time, I'm Randy. And I'm Daniel. And this has been Gaming Gig. Peace out.